My name is David France. I'm the director of the documentary feature film Welcome to Chechnya, which is playing in the panorama section of the Berlin Alley 2020. Um, the film is about uh, uh, the underground network of activists who have pulled together to respond to an, an um, intense crime against humanity in Chechnya in the south of Russia. Uh, individuals who had no experience or background in the kind of dangerous work that they would be called upon to accomplish. Um, and it follows them in their work over a two-year period. Когда это все начало происходить, потому что мы все понимали, что это катастрофа, что это вопрос о спасении не двух-трех людей, а сотен людей. Нужно было людей скрывать, потому что на них велась охота. Разработали строгие протоколы по безопасности. Сейчас мы начнем заниматься экстренным переселением и постараемся вовлечь международное сообщество. Вот я буду, да, мы с тобой здесь будем спать, вместе с тобой здесь будем да. спать. Здесь будем спать. Да, что я тебе кровать отдам свою. Ага. Пойти в бок. Да, это мексиканский сериал. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Borbobak, and this time we are discussing the film Welcome to Chechnya with director David Franz. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. It's very great to have you here with us. Um, could you maybe just start telling us about um, how did you decide to get into this immense journey of uncovering the situation of LGBTQ people in, in Chechnya? Well, I had read in early 2017 about the crimes that were being committed in Chechnya right. against the community, and, um, uh, and headlines went around the globe, really. And I think everybody knew for a minute what was happening there, but the story died very quickly. Um, I was under the impression that maybe the crimes had also subsided, but yeah. it turns out that they hadn't, and I learned over the summer that in the absence of any sort of political um, uh, response to what was happening there, yeah. that uh, activists, kind of ordinary queer activists, had taken on the immense and dangerous task of rescuing people and getting them to safety. And, and I felt that that was a story that I needed to know more about, um, yeah. to, to, to see what, the, what they were against, what, they, what, the, what their work was like, what they were yes. accomplishing but also what, what it took to be the kind of people that uh, took mm -hmm. on this responsibility when no one else was doing it. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the story that I wanted to learn more about. So mm -hmm. I called and, uh, and asked if I could come with my cameras, and they said yes. Yeah, wonderful. Um, can you tell us a bit about this particular place of Chechnya within the, the Chechen Republic within the, the Russian Federation, because I think that's also important to, to have this context. It, it is, and I think may, maybe a, people mistakenly believe that Chechnya is its own country when it's not. It's a, right. a republic, one of many republics that comprise the Russian Federation. It's a very isolated republic in the south of Russia, um, isolated geographically, but also yeah. culturally. It has, it has its own language for a very small population of about 1.4 million people, and it is uh, cut off uh, largely from the rest of the country. Um, yeah. well, it's a hard place to get to, yeah. and uh, and also it's given us a measure of autonomy by the Russian government. Um, so they right. they although they they are obliged to follow Russian law uh, often, and in this case this is included as well, where yeah. the Russian law is not imposed. So. Although it, it's um, recognized that this, is, this campaign yeah. is going on in Chechnya, the Russian government is doing nothing to stop it. Right. Um, with these sort of documentaries that are investigating and uncovering um, such crucial issues in the world, um, 
the documentary ethics is always a very important question, and I wonder what were your um, most important consideration when it came when it came to that. Ethically, I think. Well, I had a, my first challenge was to make sure that no one knew that I was making this film. No one right. uh, uh, followed me into this underground network. Yes. And uh, and so that was um, a, a required uh, kind of a strict protocol. I couldn't use a professional camera crew or sound crew. Yes. Um, so I was kind of sneaking in and out uh, as though I were a tourist, um, carrying all my equipment in, in my pocket. Yeah. Um, uh, that was the first uh, of my challenges. The second was that we realized very early on that this is a campaign by the Chechen leadership to cleanse the Chechen bloodline of uh, queer Chechens um, yes. under the bizarre belief that you could um, uh, eliminate, liquidate uh, all known LGBTQ people in Chechnya and thereby eliminate the existence of gay Chechens. Um, uh, and that meant that it was not enough just to get people out because they were being hunted as part of this campaign, no matter where they landed. So the ethical consideration that was the, um, the, uh, the most paramount for us was to make sure that we didn't reveal the identities of anybody that we were following. Yeah. Because if it were known that they were alive even in Berlin or, or some other place of more relative freedoms, yes. Uh, if, if, if they were discovered to be living somewhere else, they were, the government had an edict mm -hmm. to the family members to bring them back yeah. to face this, this condemnation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and how did you achieve that? I, it was very interesting to see there is this um, very intriguing technique that you used to, to provide this safety for the identity of, of mm -hmm. the people who mm -hmm. tell their stories in your, in your film. Well, they, there was a... Uh, a hesitancy on most people's part to allow me to film their faces. Yeah. And uh, I made an argument to them that, uh, uh, that I needed to know what it looked like to experience what they were experiencing, to know the emotions of it, to know the, the, um, the toll of, of what it was like to be hunted right. like this. And that I, uh, I promised that I would find a way to disguise them. And, Luckily, people believed me, even though I had no idea what I would be able to do to accomplish yeah. this. And I gave everyone the um, promise that I would bring back to them, for their approval, yes. the technique that I was using, and so that they could see um, and be assured that they were being protected um, and their identities were not being exposed in any way. Yeah. So after filming for some time, I began working with uh, artists of all sorts, uh, VFX specialists, um, yeah. people who had addressed this problem in the past. And I found nothing really that worked in a way that would both allow them to be anonymous, but allow an audience to experience their emotional journey. Yeah. Um, and that's when I settled on this brand new technique, which, which we call a face doubling technique. Mm -hmm. um, there were 22 people in the film yeah. who needed protection in this way. Yes. And, um, and I asked 22 activists, mostly queer activists in New York uh, and in Los Angeles to loan their faces uh, mm -hmm. as an act of activism yeah. to shield the people who are in the film. Yeah. And, uh, and what we did with their faces, we shot them in an intensive uh, blue screen environment to ingest their faces into an algorithm. Right. And the algorithm we used as a kind of a, uh, a, a, a tracking device to yeah. map the new face over the old face. Yeah. So what we get are this, the fear in the eyes, the, the words out of the mouth, the, the joy, as well as the, the tragedy, um, all while expressed under someone else's face. Yeah. So it's a very interesting technique. It's nev never been um, tried before. In fact, I was, I was assured it was impossible, mm -hmm. that this was not going to yeah. work. Yeah. Um, and it took almost a year to, to make it work. Yes. But I think what it's been able to accomplish is to give back the power to these folks, mostly very yeah. young people, yeah. uh, to, to tell their own stories. It yeah. um, restored their humanity in a way. Right. And, um, and, 
And in that way, I think it was very effective. And yeah. it was worth the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, this also translates back um, to the filming techniques that were used. Um, there are segments in the film that are filmed by, by the protagonists, by the people that you work with. So that, was, that also seems like a tool to, to sort of provide them with, with their own agency in telling mm -hmm. their first, first person accounts of, right. of all these crimes that were, that were happening and all the situation that, were, that they were in. So was this like a conscious decision from, from your side to provide them with this? We left cameras in the safe houses. Yeah. Um, and uh, invited people to film anything they wanted to film. And, um, and for the most part, people felt a need to tell their own stories. Yeah. So we got back uh, footage of this, these intensive kind of testimonials about, yeah. about torture, about, um, about a dislocation from one's family and from one's people and one's culture and one's language and, and, and the loneliness that that, yeah. that entails. And, a really a kind of a first-person account of what it means to be a refugee, yeah. kind of the, the state of being a refugee, and that, that was very powerful. Yeah. Um, and we were able to use some of that in the film. Right. Um, one of my questions would be regarding the, um, the, the found footage material of extreme <coughs> violence. Um, it is something that raises ethical questions as well, and it is something that I think many directors would shy away from including in the film. So why did you decide to include these particular segments in the film? There are three pieces uh, like that, as you describe, um, which are the uh, actual forensic evidence of what is being uh, carried out in that yeah. part of the world. And uh, this, this is footage that was filmed mostly by the people who were conducting the, the, the tortures and the murders. Uh, and they were shot uh, either as uh, a deliverable of sorts to, to show that their superiors, that they had carried out this, this, this act, uh, this hideous act that they had been obliged to carry out. Or they were recorded as a kind of a trophy of mm -hmm. this, of the, of the kind of m malicious... Um, just uh, ugliness, um, and uh, in a in a a period like this, a period of of genocide, really, of kind of ethnic cleansing from within, um, the that footage tells so much more than the individuals can tell us about mm -hmm. what they survived, because it is uh, evidence that backs up everything that they're saying, yeah. and. Um, the ethical concern that, that I had in using that was, again, about um, re-traumatizing um, the people who are in the footage or, or, or um, you know, uh, well, I felt like I needed to disguise them as well. Yeah. So even the people in the archival footage are wearing other people's faces. Right. Um, and I, I wanted to make sure that... Um, that we were not uh, furthering the the work of the people who were uh, assaulting them or or killing them. That yeah. that we were still protecting their dignity yes. in in a significant way. Um, and I know that some of that footage is hard to watch, but I think it really drives home what it is we're talking about. Um, and this is an ongoing campaign. We have no idea how many people have been killed or have just gone missing. Uh, but we do know that there are some 40,000 uh, queer people still living in Chechnya and still uh, at risk for this kind of, um, kind of criminal activity. Um, th they, are, uh, they are living very imperiled lives. Yeah. Um, if they're discovered, they're dead. Yes. And, um, and so there's an urgency to, to tell this story and an urgency to show exactly what's at stake, and I think that that's what mm -hmm. that footage does but better than anything we might have been able to explain yeah. in, in, you know, in voiceover or anything else. Yeah. It's right there for you to look at and right there for you to, to try and uh, um, deny. Yeah. Um, but I think it calls the audience to some sort of account. Like, yeah. like well, you have to keep talking about yeah. this. You have seen this now. You know what's happening. Yeah. Um, you are complicit. You yeah. are implicated. Um, you have to carry this story forward. Yeah. Well, the horror of it definitely becomes 
very tangible throughout, uh, throughout the film and especially throughout these <coughs> segments. Um, the film also sort of functions as a commentary on global politics regarding this issue as well. Um, so can you tell us about that, um, about, about the global context of this, of this whole situation? Well, the story that we tell really directly is about the collapsing um, uh, uh, civil rights of queer people in Russia over the last decade. Um, and that's paralleled, as you point out, Around the, around the world, really. Um, we are in a period of retrenchment. We're in a period of, of uh, uh, political loss. Um, and, uh, and this is just the, the worst example of it right now. There are some 80 countries in the world where it is illegal to be gay. That number is growing, not shrinking. There are eight or 10 countries where it is punishable by death to be gay. This is the only part of the world since Hitler that gay people have been, are being rounded up for execution in a top-down government-led campaign and, um, and that, that we're not talking about it in the same way that we talked about the Hitler's crimes yeah. is, uh, is absurd. I mean, this is, this is something that needs to be addressed um, at that level and, it's, and so far it hasn't been. Yeah. Well, I mean, this might be a, a very far-reaching and, and a very complex um, question or thing to think about, but um, throughout your work on this topic especially, um, what do you think, what, what could be needed from the side of queer communities and from the side of like global politics to, to kind of start a change within this situation that is happening in Chechnya? Well, the first thing we need to do is know about it. And, uh, and I don't blame the community for not knowing about it. I blame the media cycle for not keeping the story up in the air. Um, I blame political leaders for not saying anything about it. Um, Angela Merkel spoke out um, very powerfully initially and went quiet. Um, m the government in the US said almost nothing about it. The White House made no comment. Um, and so far has not commented. Um, I think we as a community, um, we as uh, ordinary citizens have the power to, to, um, to, to try and change that, to try and amplify our voices through our governments and through our newspapers and through our, um, uh, you know, all the platforms that will, uh, uh, are necessary to engage in order to, to affect change and to bring about justice. Um, yeah. and, um, so that's what I'm hoping the film's principal accomplishment will be, is to, um, is to empower everybody who sees the film or who knows about the film yeah. to begin saying something uh, and, to, and to force this subject back into political dialogue, back into the consciousness, the general consciousness yeah. uh, of our communities yeah. so that, um, so that it's uh, undeniable and yes. inescapable and, yeah. and and we force our political yeah. leaders to say something about it. Yeah. I think we can. I think we have the power to stop it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we have the power to to bring Ramzan Kadyrov, who's the head of Chechnya. I don't think we have any power to bring him out of Russia and into a, a an international tribunal to yeah. to um, to to stand uh, accused of those crimes. And I think he should be. Um, but I think that the, uh, Russia has isolated itself so thoroughly from. Um, from those avenues of accountability that, um, yeah. that I don't think we can accomplish that. I don't think that the film or the movement will be a failure because of that, Certainly. as long as what we're able to accomplish is to stop what's yeah. happening there, to expose, um, to make it part of um, the historical record, and yeah. then pr to bring an end to it. Yeah, I'm sure that it will, it will have a very profound effect. Um, Finally, my question would be because you mentioned this in the very beginning that one of the, the main ideas behind telling this story was kind of to look into what is the catalyst behind uh, this sort of activism where people really put everything on the line to help others. So I wonder what is this catalyst? What is your view now after working, working with these people very closely? 
I think what I have learned is that certainly in, in this story, the story in Welcome to Chechnya, is a story of love. It's a story about people who, uh, who out of a kind of a, who are, who are driven by a, 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 a love of humanity yeah. to step up and do something. Um, and w within this movement, there are multiple uh, romantic love stories and you see the interplay between those and um, and in the end I think when you walk away from the film you you feel you feel the power of love and you feel inspired by that and um, um, and and maybe moved to to find your own um, kind of irrepressible uh, ability to to step forward and do something yeah well that's I, I can only agree with that after after watching the film. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for the interview. And in the name of the Teddy TV, we wish you all the best for the rest of the Berlinale. Thank you so much. Thank you.